Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have a beautiful garden DIY for you today. In today's crafting adventure we're going to be making a special type of living fairy garden. Now you can place this either inside your home or outside on your patio, whichever you prefer. Now the items that you're going to be needing is you're going to need a nice terracotta pot, this pot measures approximately seven and a half inches in diameter and about seven and a half inches high. And I liked this one that had the smooth sides. They're a little bit more straight up and down, but you can use whatever terracotta pot that you can find, whether they have the band or not. That's completely up to you. Now you're also going to need a terracotta saucer. And I did pick up two. This is the first one that I picked up. This is the smaller one. This one measures approximately nine and three-fourths inches in diameter, and it's approximately an inch deep. Now you're looking for a saucer that's much larger than what your pot would normally need. So here you can see I have quite a bit of space. But once I got home and I started playing with this, I want to put a lot of items down here in the saucer as well. And this one doesn't give me quite enough room. So I went back and purchased a larger one. Now this one is 12 inches in diameter and about an inch and a half deep. So now you can see I have quite a bit of room to put the other items that I want. I'm planning on putting a nice large plant in the top. We're going to be decorating the pot here on the outside. And then we're also going to be planting and adding some other items down here in the saucer. Now for your fairy garden items, you're going to need one of these, which is a flat piece that looks like a door. Dollar Tree carries these and they usually have a couple different ones to choose from. And then you also need some other items to decorate. So I've chosen a package of the large mushrooms. You get one red, one yellow, one blue. And then I also had found these at one point at Dollar Tree, they're little mini trees. I have some mushrooms and then some other decorative items that come in the little packages and a cute little frog. So this is what I've pulled out. I may add a few or not use all of them when I go to put everything together. You'll also want to pull out an assortment of stones. This is what we're going to be using to make a faux wall on the side of our planter. We're going to start off by attaching our little door here to our planter and then we're going to be making like a little stone wall that will go around the sides and in that stone wall we can also add some of the other items like maybe the little birdhouse or this little sign that says welcome but that's completely up to you depending on what you can find. The only thing is when we go to attach this you want to make sure that you're up from the bottom by about an inch because this is going to be sitting flat in the pot but we're also going to be adding some other elements in here dirt and growing plants in the bottom so you want to make sure that your door is lifted so once it goes in and the other items go in it looks level with the ground now to attach these items to our terracotta pot we're going to be using mortar mix so I picked up one of the tarps here uh, in the hardware section from Dollar Tree. This is going to help protect my surface when I'm using the mortar. You're also going to need some gloves and a face mask when you're mixing the mortar mix. The mortar mix is like powder and if you mix it up too fast it'll really get in the air and you don't want to inhale the mix. I also purchased these items from Dollar Tree so that I can mix up my mortar mix and not have to worry that it's in anything that uh, I need to use for anything else. These are just two large plastic bowls. And then this is a four cup measuring cup which is actually a really nice size and that's a great value. 
I have a glass one of these by Pyrex in my kitchen, otherwise I would be buying one of these for my kitchen. And then to mix everything, I picked up one of the Cooking Concepts spatulas. Now all of the stones, the fairy garden items, and all of the supplies here to mix the mortar came from Dollar Tree. The terracotta pots and the mortar mixer came from Lowe's. What I picked up from Lowe's to use for our project today is Fast Set Repair Mortar. It takes uh, 20 to 40 minutes to set up, so you need to work with it quickly. And all you need to do is add water slowly until you can mix it to the correct consistency. So I have all my little fairy garden items that I want to attach to my pot. I have my stones out, so I have some of these small little black stones and then these are the mixed colored stones. I also bought a package of this. Now this is the first time I found this at Dollar Tree and they're kind of, they have different colors in there but they also look like they have kind of a white powder finish over them. I bought this bag to go in the top after I plant my plant inside. This is going to finish off the top and then I'll add a couple more items of the fairy garden to the top. Okay, I have my gloves on and my mask. I've placed about a cup of the mortar mix in here and I have some water. And it says to slowly add the water. And you want to kind of mix from the bottom and turn over. Now this is fast set, so that means it'll set up and get thick after about 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how much liquid you add. So you do need to move rather quickly. Okay, so that looks like that was between a fourth to a third of a cup of water that I added. And that looks like that's going to be about the right consistency for me. We'll try it. So we're attaching everything here to the side. The first thing I want to do is add some stones here at the bottom. My door to be up a little bit from the bottom because we're going to also be planting in the base. I have a little trowel. I'm going to use this to help me get my stuff on here. Get it down. You just want to do small sections at a time unless you're attaching something large. Go ahead and start to place your stones. So you need at least a quarter to half an inch, enough so that you can place your stones. Okay, now that I have my first row down, I want to place my door here. Okay, so then you want to get your door on. So I've been putting down, it's a good quarter of an inch, it's nice and thick. You want to be able to press your objects in a little bit. That will hold them in place as you continue to work. And clean some of this, pull it down. Kind of 
kind of work around on one side. I want to add some stones here so it looks like there's a stone wall. Do a little bit on either side of the house here. So just continue to add your stones and build your wall. Now you can design your wall however you would like it. You just need to make sure that the bottom here stays clean and that you don't have anything coming down, otherwise your pot is not going to sit flat. I really like that and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I have my stones on on both sides and I'm very happy. I love the way that it looks. And I've made sure that when I lay it flat, it sits flat. And now I'm going to add a couple of the embellishments and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start by putting a little row of stones at the bottom and then I'm going to add a little bit of the mortar mix to the back and then push it in. And that's how I'm going to be attaching the other couple items that I want right onto my pot here. Enough on the back there. And then you can also use your fingers to get in there and to smooth out the mortar. You'll want to do that right around the edges of where all the rocks are. And anything that you attach, you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth around the edges. Let's see, I have the little beehive there. I have everything on and I just left a small section here in the back from here to here that I didn't apply anything. That's because the pot's going to be right up to the base here. And I turned it upside down because I want to make sure that everything is well attached and that it dries properly. That also allows me to clean off the bottom to make sure that's nice and smooth. Now I'm going to let this fully dry and I will come back in the morning and then we can move forward. As you're working on this, once the mortar starts to get a little crumbly, you need to stop working with it because all it will do is crumble and then the items that you're trying to put on will start to fall off, which is not what you want. So you do need to move quickly before it sets up. And that amount, about one cup, was plenty. I still have some left over in here, but as you can see, it's starting to get really dry and crumbly. Now you don't want to rinse any of this out inside your house. You want to take it outside and use a hose because if you rinse this out into your sink, you can damage your pipes, so you don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to get cleaned up. I'm going to let my project dry, and then I'll be back and we can move forward. Now I've let everything sit and dry overnight and it looks like it's pretty thoroughly dry. I did have one issue, one of the stones did fall out and to replace it I used this which is called Dab Rapid Fuse Super Glue. Now you can use this on ceramics, wood, all different types of surfaces, that's why I picked it up. This is the stone that fell out so I just put the glue underneath and placed it back and it should be fine. And then here on this side, you can see I put the little birdhouse. And then on this side, I put the little honeybee. 
Now this is set pretty well, but I want to make sure that none of that becomes loose and falls off. So now I'm going to go over the stone area and everything with Mod Podge and I'm using the matte because I don't want a glossy finish. This is just going to help seal everything in and it'll fill in any cracks or anything to make sure nothing comes off. So just make sure you go over all the areas that have the mortar. Remember the glue will dry clear. Okay, so you want to get a nice thick coat of Mod Podge and then you want that to fully set up before you move forward and start planting. Now my glue is pretty much dry. I still have a few areas where it's looking a little white. That means it's still wet and needs to dry. But I think I'm far enough along that I can move forward. So I have my large base here. And the area that I left in the back here that doesn't have anything, that's where I'm going to put it right up next to the back. I want as much room down here so I can plant and put my other items. Now the majority of the live plants that I'm going to be putting here in the bottom are all succulents. So I have a cactus, palm, citrus mix. This is perfect. So you want to fill in the bottom around the pot and this is why I put the little birdhouse and the door up a little bit so that I would have room for the soil and once that's placed then they'll look like they're sitting right up on top. Now I have all of my dirt filled in. And I have it just below the edge here. Now when I water, I'm going to be watering the pot on the top. It will sink through and fill up the bottom and water all the ones on the bottom. So that is nice. I don't have to worry about pouring on top and moving anything. And I did here in the back go in and put a little bit of the dirt across the back just so that is uniform all the way around. Now I went through my yard and took clippings of several of the succulents that I already have in my yard and this is what I'm going to use to plant in the base here and I have several different kinds and I've tried the majority of these and they easily will start a new plant just by removing some of the lower leaves and planting them in soil. And then I also have this plant. Now this plant has been with me for years. It just popped up in one of my plants about 10 years ago and it flowers and reseeds itself. Now when I was younger we used to call these a wandering Jew. I don't know if they're still called that or what their proper name is but I really do like these and I like the back because they have a really pretty purple color to them and then the front is nice and green and you can see here this one is just getting ready to bloom it has little uh, buds there and they are little white blooms and they're very pretty so I have a couple clippings of that plant as well and then I discovered in one of my pots in my sage pot that I was growing moss so I went ahead and removed a couple pieces of moss and I'm going to uh, try to work in these pieces here into the base I'm hoping that they will take hold and spread I think that will look awesome so when you're making these go through your yard look and see what you have you know most succul succulents are easy to propagate so are several other plants so learn what you have in your yard you might be surprised 
And then along with the plants, I'm also going to incorporate some of the fairy garden items that I showed you in the beginning. So I have all these ready to go. And I also have still my selection of stones here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to lay out a little walkway here and I want it to come and kind of curve. So I've just pulled out some flat stones. I'm just going to kind of line them up here on the dirt and make my path. It's good if you can kind of lay out a little bit of what you want. Kind of your foundation before you start planting your plants. It'll give you a better idea of where to place all those plants. Okay, so I like that little path up to the front door. I'm going to start over here on this side. This is the side I have the little birdhouse. So I'm just going to work through and add my fairy garden items and plant some of my succulents. And then this is the area that I'm going to stick in. And you just push it down firmly. You want to get a good amount down into the soil. If you do find any moss growing in your yard that you would like to add to your fairy garden, just simply take a small shovel and scrape down about half an inch. It should easily come up with a small amount of soil. Then you're able to just place it over fertile soil and keep it moist. It should reroot and grow. So just slowly work your way around and fill in with whatever looks right to you. Now you can add anything that you would like, additional stones, moss. The only thing that I found, the dried moss that you get in packages and things does not work well in this type of a situation because it does tend to mold and you don't want that. I'm going to continue to plant my base. Once I get that done, I'll come back and show you what we're going to do with the top. You can lay it out however you like on yours, whatever you have available. Now when you purchase your pot here, you also want to purchase a plant to go inside. And I chose to do a really pretty hibiscus. Now the hibiscus flowers only last for about a day or two and then they close off. But I really liked this plant because as you can see it has lots of buds. And then this way I can just drop my plant inside for the top and I'm good to go. This is only going to last me through the summer and then it'll die out and then I can put something else inside. Now if you want to plant your up top pot, you can do so. If you want to add more succulents, maybe another fairy house and another little vision, you can do that as well. But I wanted this area to be easily switchable so that I can change it throughout the seasons. Now the succulents in my area tend to do very well outside all year. You just need to have it in an area that's a little protected when winter comes and it starts to freeze. But other than that, they do very well. They grow all year and they look really nice. And I'm planning on putting this on my coffee table outside under a covered patio. So that's why I want to switch out the top. For summertime, I wanted something nice and bright and cheery. Now I'm just gonna leave it in the pot that it came in because I know it still has plenty of room inside and this easily goes inside the pot that I purchased. Now the only thing that I do to help my plant out, it was leaning over to the side. So I went ahead and added some more soil and propped it up straight. And now to help finish off the top there and to make it a little bit prettier, I'm going to add these pretty 
soft kind of white rocks that I picked up from Dollar Tree. This will also help when I water so that the dirt doesn't go everywhere. Now if you are a cat person and you also like to have plants, but you have trouble with your cats maybe getting into your plants and things like that, put stones and rocks around the bottom of your plants and your cats will leave them alone. Okay, I like that. So now any little bit that you see, you'll be able to see those really pretty white rocks. That'll also help keep the soil in and not wash out when I water. I'm gonna place my little guy in here. And get him to lay the way that I want. And then from this position, I can fit in my last little mushroom here. You probably can't see it from the top, but I can see it if I'm here on the side just to add a little bit something something up there to the top. And there you go, we're all done. I'm very pleased with my living fairy garden. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope it gave you some inspiration to get outside and do some gardening and make your own little fairy garden. There's so many different ways that you can do your fairy garden. Just go ahead and use what you have and have some fun. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. If you enjoy craft tutorials and hauls, you're going to want to check out these other videos. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next video.